I mean, look at that. It's crazy, right? So much like pork, it's crazy. So this is your reminder to sharpen your knives. First things first, I have two sweet potatoes. Oh, we're just gonna roast them as is. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Siri, sweetheart, set the timer for 30 minutes. And this here is a whetstone. And it has different degrees of grain. It helps get the edge quicker. This is a great gift for somebody. I have no affiliation. But I do love a sharp knife. My biggest pet peeve is having a dull knife. And when people ask what kind of knives I use, the sharpest knife is the best knife in the house. It doesn't matter the brand. I tend to use Japanese knives. They might get dull a little faster, but they're easier to sharpen. And I prefer that. Nice sharp knife, ready to get down to business. Let's do some cooking. I have this amazing lion's mane that I grew. This one's from here in the UK. In the US, there's several companies. Just have a look online. There's plenty. If you know some mushroom growers, list them below in the comments so everybody else can see them. And if you have a link to their site, feel free. I'm all about using amazing mushrooms. And these are awesome. Cut it off at the root, at the stem. Try to keep it in one piece because it will grow back. So I'll get two or three growths out of this. A few times when I thought I was done growing, I'd put this outside to use it as compost and put it in the garden and uh, it grew another one. But just clip off any anything that's dirty or st stuck from the actual substrate and just clip off. Try to get two out of this. We'll use these two. A little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan. Let's try not to get any fires going. I like to salt the bottom of the pan. It also helps tell if you're, if it's hot enough, let's start bouncing around. We're just gonna place the mushrooms down. This one, this cute little thing. It's so cute. So I like, like to get it acquainted with the pan. You can hear it talking and sizzling. Give a little pressure. I'm just gonna add a touch more. Not too much, just on the edges and around. A weighted pan, I'm just gonna gently place this and I'll just let it sit. I won't apply too much pressure in the beginning here because I just want it to get acclimated. And this creates a really nice even sear. All right, so it's been about a minute. And it's starting to smell nice. I can tell it's cooking properly. I always have two towels, one for the pan, one for underneath. See how that's cooking? Looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil and then I'm gonna give them a flip. Even the cute little one is cooking. This one mushroom under here is a little bit bigger than the other one, so I'm applying a little bit more pressure on this side. I want it to naturally condense itself into that meaty texture that we're looking for. And the more you press, the more liquid will come out. So I'm not worried about burning it at all because as the liquid comes out, it stops it from burning. But I wanna get that nice caramelization on there first. So it has some nice color and forms that flavor. So you can see. I am gonna do a little bit more though, because I want it thinner. I'm gonna go for a cutlet, schnitzel style. I'm gonna add a little bit more pressure here, just to get it down. And now a lot of the liquid will come out. Sometimes you might have to lower the heat a bit just so you don't burn yourself. It's a great way to cook mushrooms, especially if you want the meaty, steaky ones. For all the people out there wondering, why are you gonna make it taste like meat if you're vegetarian or if you don't wanna eat meat? I didn't give up eating meat because I didn't like meat or the texture. I gave up eating meat because I don't want to kill animals. This is gonna do it. Just gonna give this a quick rinse. A little bit of oil. 
ready for the next time. Just a little bit of, we'll use a little bit of flour. I don't need too much. I have some panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna season flour, a little bit of garlic granulated, and also the breadcrumbs. A little bit of smoked paprika. Not even close. Siri, sweetheart, please give me another 20 minutes. I bought some dried parsley the other day. I normally don't use a lot of dried parsley, but it would be good in this. Make it look extra good. Make it look like my Nana used to make. And I also have some, it's just already blended pork seasoning. It's just sage and onion seasoning. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the flour and to the breadcrumbs. And then for the wet, you can use whatever kind of plant milk you like. I don't need too much. Now I do a couple things. It depends on what I have on hand. I sometimes will add mayonnaise to this to thicken it, or you can add vegan yogurt, but I have a little bit of mayonnaise. It really helps with the coating, and then I just mix that up nice. All right, so I have the breading station all ready to go. But before I do that, I'm gonna set it aside, because we'll get, this will be the last thing we, we do, we put on this food. The first thing I'm gonna do, because I wanna do more of like a pork chop style. I'm gonna do applesauce. I haven't had applesauce in forever, so let's make some. I have some apples here. This one has a brown spot on it. Oh, that one's not good at all. Look at that, it's gross. The other half of it. Probably the one thing I don't have in the house is a paring knife, so I'm just gonna use this peeler. Always a nice game trying to get it one long ribbon. All right, so for the apples, quick rough chop. You want your treat? All you're looking at is your treat. Here you go. You take that away now. Go have fun. A little bit of heat. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of cinnamon, a couple zests of lemon, a little bit of lemon juice, about a quarter cup of water, a tablespoon of brown sugar. All right, this one's done. Just gonna pop this big one back in. All right, so I'll move on to the breading. Touch of salt to this, touch of salt to that. Black pepper, flour. One hand wet, one hand dry. Almost like a shake and bake, we could put it in a bag. The applesauce, hear that? Looking good. All right, so we have the applesauce going, lion's mane, pork chops. But I'm waiting for the sweet potato to cool down enough for me to handle, because I just want the innards. Applesauce is looking great. Stir it to mash it. I don't have to do anything other than that. Yum. I'm just gonna take the skin off of these. And the skin comes right off very nicely. Look at that. Frankie's been patiently waiting here. Potatoes, I'm gonna add some fresh thyme. It takes a second, but requires a little bit of patience. Touch of maple syrup, just about a tablespoon. Pinch of salt, pinch of black pepper. I don't need them super smooth, so they'll be a little bit chunky, a little rustic. A little bit of oil. And that'll be ready to go in the oven in a minute. I'm gonna pop the sweet potatoes in the oven now. And this, we're gonna heat up some oil. Just wanna coat the pan. While that's cooking, might as well have some courgette. 
bit of salt on top here, and the black pepper. Couple of minutes each side. It's not time to eat yet, Frankie. I'm just going to let this cool down, the oil. But I have some spinach and all those extra flavor bits. I love using the spinach as, an, as a pan cleaner. Just takes up all that extra flavor. No added oils needed. Plenty in there. It took two seconds. And because spinach is so watery. Quick rinse. Ready for the next time. I'm gonna pop this right in the oven. Sweet potato, and that baby spinach. Look at that, look at the great pork chop. And this delicious applesauce. Put some right here. Slide over a little bit, baby. Gotta love that applesauce. Nice. All right there. That looks delicious. Super nice meal. Yum. That looks super nice. Let's try this applesauce. Mm. You can give me shit. I don't have any steak knives. This is my steak knife. A little applesauce on there. Super tender. Mm. So good. All right, I don't mean to eat and run, but I gotta feed Miss Frankie. Oh, she's gonna freak out. If you like this video and you want to grow your own mushroom, check the comments, check the description. I'll put a bunch of stuff down there for where you can find some in the US and the UK. If you're from another country, pop down where other people can find the grow kits or where to find lion's mane mushrooms and check out these videos. I have a whole mushroom masterclass already to help you along. See you soon.